Hey everybody, this is Mr. Bortnick for AP Calculus AB. We're in unit seven, differential equations. Today's topic is 7.7, .7, particular solutions using initial conditions and separation of variables. Enjoy today's notes. All right, welcome to 7.7 .7 separation of variables. Today we're talking about particular solutions. If you have not yet watched the 7.6 video, I would make sure for sure that you've watched the 7.6 video, which is on uh, how to do separation of variables with a general solution. Today we're sort of extending what we did in that 7.6 video to figure out these things that are called particular solutions. Specifically, what makes this different from what we did in our previous lesson is we are finding the C value. So we are trying to find the C value given a little bit of extra information uh, in this problem. Uh, so let's jump in right into problem number one. Problem number one says find the solution to the differential equation dy over dx is equal to x times y squared with the initial condition that y of 1 is equal to 1. Here in this problem, you know, my my first step, if I'm going to try to find the, uh, the solution, right, they're trying to ask us to find the solution in this case, is I'm thinking about I'm going to need to do some of the separation of variables technique from that last lesson. Here, because the x and the y are both being multiplied, we actually can distribute our squared to both of these, and we get that dy over dx is equal to x squared times y squared. We can only do that because this is multiplying in here. If this was adding, we know that we couldn't distribute that squared, but luckily for us, it's multiplying in this problem. From here, same as yesterday, we wanna do sort of our, our same steps as what we did. We need to separate our variables first. And so step one, we wanna get all the y terms on one side, we wanna get all the x terms on the other. If we do that, we can multiply by dx to, to get that on the right side, and then divide by y squared to get that on the left side. If we do that, we're going to get 1 over y squared times dy is equal to x squared dx. Now that our variables are separated, we got the y's on the left, we got the x's on the right, we're going to take the integral of both sides of this equation. So the integral of the left side is going to be equal to the integral of the right side. And what we can say is, okay, this is the integral of y to the negative 2 dy, which is equal to the integral of x squared dx. If you take that antiderivative on the left, you're going to end up with y to the negative 1 divided by negative 1 is equal to the antiderivative of the right side, which is x cubed over 3 plus rc. Um, at this point, We've got most of uh, most of what we need, um, but and there's a couple of different different things that we can do because we want the solution that goes through one comma one, right? Y of one is equal to one. Um, we could try to get the y by itself and plug in uh, and then find out what c is, or we can at this step plug in what we've got and then uh, solve for c now. Um, my general take is that once I've taken that antiderivative of both sides, I'm gonna plug in the initial condition and I wanna find that c value so that I can then get the y by itself. So what that's gonna look like in this particular problem is we're gonna say, okay, well, y is one. So uh, y to the negative one over negative one is gonna be the same thing as one, uh, negative one over just our one that we've got here on the, the left side. And that's gonna be equal to one cubed over three plus our C. Now again, the left side here, what happened is we plugged that one in, but it was being raised to the negative one power, so it went down to the denominator, and then that negative one went up to the numerator here for this. So what I wanna do next is I wanna get the C by itself. So here in this particular problem, we see that negative one divided by one is negative one. That's equal to one cubed, which is one divided by three, so one third plus our C. And if we subtract one third from both sides, we get that C is equal to negative one minus one third, which is negative four thirds uh, on the left side of this equation. So now that I know what my C value is, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my like my general solution, and I'm gonna plug that C in, and I still wanna get the Y by itself. So on the left side of that equation, I have negative one over Y, right? that's the same thing as, as this here on the left side, is equal to our X cubed over three, plus we said the C value is negative four thirds. So we can even just, instead of putting a plus, we could just say minus 
four thirds uh, for that particular problem. Next, what we're gonna do is uh, I'm gonna get rid of the negatives on this, this left side if we're trying to get the y by itself. So if I multiply both sides by negative one or divide by negative one, I'm gonna get that one over y is equal to negative x cubed over three plus four thirds. So we change the sign of each of the terms uh, in this, this uh, problem. Um, now, because uh, we're trying to get the y by itself on the left side, we might notice that, hey, these have the same denominator. So this is the same thing as one over y is equal to negative x cubed plus four divided by three. And then because this is in the denominator on the left side, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the reciprocal of each side and say that y then is equal to three over negative x cubed plus four. And so this would be what's called my particular solution for my differential equation. So not only is this the, the general solution of it, but it's the sp specific particular solution that goes through the point one comma one, which was the initial condition that they gave me. And so three divided by negative x cubed uh, plus four would be that equation. What we see over here is our slope field. So tying this back in into uh, earlier in this chapter, we know that the initial condition goes through one comma one. So I'm gonna try to sketch uh, what, this, what this particular solution would look like. If I follow the slope fields, right, if we're trying to draw that particular solution, we wanna draw so that we're going along uh, and parallel to uh, the slope curves. And so in this case, I'm seeing something that maybe looks like this where it's starting to go upward and we're going parallel when we, as we go to the right. And then as we go to the left, it looks like that the slope is sort of leveling out. It looks like we have a slope of, of zero over here and then it starts decreasing and then it starts leveling out again. And so maybe something that looks like this uh, for a particular solution. I imagine if you graphed this function, three divided by negative x cubed plus four, that you actually get something that looks like this, uh, you know, something pretty close to, that looks like that. Nice, that's problem number one. Uh, problem number two, let's talk about that one. So for problem number two, it says find the solution of y is equal to f of x to the differential equation dy over dx is equal to two x over y with the initial condition that f of two is equal to one. The idea, once again, if we're gonna find that solution, we're gonna need to, to separate our variables first here. And so I'm gonna scroll down so that we can see that. Uh, and if we take our equation that we started out with, if we multiply by y on both sides, we're gonna end up with y times dy. And if we multiply by dx on both sides, we're gonna end up with a two x dx on the right side. Next, if we take the integral of both sides, we can anti-differentiate so that we get y squared over two on the left is equal to the antiderivative of two x, which is gonna be just x squared plus our c on the right side. Same idea though, um, I could get the y by itself if I wanted to find the general solution, but since I want the particular solution here, I'm gonna plug in what they gave me. They told me here that x is two, they told me here that y is one, let's substitute both of those in and find out what our c value is. So one squared divided by two is equal to two squared plus our c, that means that one half is equal to four plus c, if we subtract four from both sides, we would get that that's equal to, that C is equal to negative 3.5 for that, or negative seven over two if we wanted to write it as a fraction. So next I wanna get that Y by itself. So I'm going from uh, this step here where I, before that I had the C, and I'm gonna uh, rewrite this equation and get that Y by itself. So Y squared over two is equal to X squared plus the C that we found, which was actually a negative 3.5. So I'm gonna say X squared minus 3.5. Next, we wanna get that Y by itself. So I'm gonna multiply by two for both of these terms. This is gonna give me Y squared is equal to two X squared. And then we do need to multiply this two by that negative 3.5 to give me a negative seven here. Next, again, we wanna take the square root of both sides to get that uh, y out of the squared. Because we're taking the square root, it's gonna end up being a plus or minus the square root of that two x squared minus seven. But this would be our final uh, solution, our uh, particular solution for problem number two. So that is 
uh, the specific y value for this differential equation that goes through 2 comma 1. Again, we can try to sketch what's going on over here. Uh, in this case, you know, we see 2 comma 1 is about right here. And the way that we would sketch this is we'd say, okay, well, it sort of looks like it's going upwards and to the right here if we're drawing our little slope field. And then if we uh, go downwards or to the left, we see that it's going towards the x-axis and then would maybe keep going after this and go like this uh, towards the right. Now, in this case, on the x-axis, if we actually found uh, if we actually found the slope, if we plugged in the point, for example, two comma zero, the y, since the y value is zero on the x-axis, we would be dividing by zero for that slope at that point. And so the slope on the x-axis is actually undefined. If I wanted to be a little bit more specific about this, I might put like an open circle there. Uh, since at that particular point, there is no slope, it's sort of going vertical at that point. And part of the reason why we have these like two parts to this equation is because we have a plus and a minus. So the plus part is this positive part of this equation, which then stops at the x-axis, and then the minus part of our equation is the bottom half of our, of our graph here. But together we have the plus and the minus. What we do sometimes in these cases is we say, okay, well, if it's going through a specific point, which would we need? Would we need the top part or would we need the bottom part? Here in this case, because it's going through the, through the point two comma one, we would actually not need the negative part, and we might be more specific here and say that it's just y is equal to positive square root of 2x squared minus 7. While if they had given us a different initial condition that was below the x-axis, we would then have a negative there instead. But this is a more specific answer for our uh, initial condition that they gave us. Let's move on to the final problem for today. So problem number three says find the solution to the differential equation dy over dx is equal to y plus 2 uh, times e to the x with the initial condition that y of 0 is equal to negative 1. Same as what we've been doing before, we're going to uh, need to separate our variables first. Here, I'm going to divide by y plus 2 on the left. I'm going to multiply by dx on the right. Um, and so that's going to give me here that uh, 1 over y plus 2 times dy is going to be equal to e to the x dx. So again, multiply the dx to the right, divide by y plus 2 to the left side. If we take the uh, integral of each side of this equation using this our separation of variables technique, uh, this looks like this is of the form like 1 over x or 1 over y. So when we take that antiderivative, we're going to get the natural log of the absolute value of y plus 2. On the right, e to the x, hey, that's our special equation that we know that both the integral and the derivative of e to the x is just e to the x, so it's going to stay the same for that, but we're going to end up with this plus c when we take that antiderivative. Uh, next, uh, now that we've taken the antiderivative of both sides, we're going to plug in our initial condition. We know that it goes through the point 0 comma negative 1, and so let's plug in those values. The natural log of negative 1, that's our y, plus 2 is equal to e to the 0 plus c. On the left side, the natural log of negative 1 plus 2, that's the same thing as the na uh, natural log of 1. And e to the 0 is anything to the 0th power is 1, so that's going to become 1 plus our c. Natural log of 1, that's a special value, generally logs of most, uh, most bases that we're dealing with of 1 is going to give us 0. So 0 is equal to 1 plus c, which means that c is equal to negative 1. So next, now that we've got uh, our c value, we're going to uh, plug in and we're going to find our specific equation for this, our particular solution. Um, and so I'll go back to essentially this step that was right here, and we'll start from here. We've got the natural log of the absolute value of y plus 2. And that's equal to e to the x plus our c, and our c was negative 1. I want to get that y by itself, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to raise it to the power of e on both sides. If we do that, we've got e raised to the natural log of the absolute value of y plus 2 is equal to e raised to the e to the x minus 1. Whoa, we have an e to the e power. 
weird for this problem. Um, but here on the left, because these are inverses, e and natural log will cancel each other out. That gives me the absolute value of y plus 2 is equal to e raised to the e to the x minus 1. Next, what we're going to do then is we're going to uh, get rid of that absolute value. By doing that, we're going to add a plus or minus on the right side. So plus or minus e to the e to the x minus 1 on that right side. And then finally, we're going to end up subtracting by 2 on each side. So y is equal to plus or minus e to the e to the x minus 1 minus 2 for that. Now again, one question that I would, I would sort of have for this is which of these is it going to be? The way that we can find out uh, whether it's plus or minus in this case is we could try plugging in the point and seeing which value does it need to be to be true. So what I'm doing right here is I'm just sort of testing to see whether we need, like whether it should be the positive or negative version of this to make it true. And so real quick, what, what is that going to be? Well, we know that the y is negative 1. That's equal to plus or minus. We still don't know e to the e to the 0 minus 1 minus r2 and so negative 1 is going to be equal to plus or minus we know that e to the 0 is uh, 1 so 1 minus 1 is 0 e to that 0 is going to give us 1 so this is 1 minus 2 if we add to 2 on both sides that's going to give me positive 1 is equal to plus or minus 1 so the only thing that that this could be on the right side for this to work is it's got to be a positive 1 obviously if both sides are going to be equa uh, of the equation are going to be the same it can't be negative 1 since 1 does not equal negative 1 so my final 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 answer for this is we're going to say y is equal to just positive e to the e to the x minus 1 minus 2 Again, that last step, what I did, the idea here was, is I was trying to find out, is it positive or negative? Which one does it need to be? So I just plugged in the point that they gave me and saw which, whether it needed to be positive or negative to make that equation to be true. And that's what we've got here on the side. Uh, last little step, I'm going to draw my solution on the graph. 0 comma negative 1 is going to be this point right here. If we draw that solution, it looks like it should be something like maybe like this which I'd imagine if we drew, if we graphed e to the e to the x minus 1 uh, minus 2, that we would have something that looks like this, uh, this graph here. Um, but that is actually it for today. Uh, that is our notes. Um, please try the practice problems that are on the next page. Check your answers. And of course, check in with your teacher if you've got any questions. I hope you have a great rest of your day. Take care.